Hello friends, in this video we are going to learn how to conduct, administer, score and interpret Bordesley Personality Inventory. So welcome. Bordesley Personality Inventory was devised by the psychologist Hans Eising and his wife Sibyl Eising in 1962. MPI is a self-report questionnaire to assess the personality traits of a person. It has two scales, extroversion versus introversion, neurotism versus emotional stability. Now you must be thinking, why is it called modestly personality inventory if it was developed by Ising and Ising? Well, the inventory is named after the modestly hospital in Denmark Hill, South London, where Ising worked. The hospital is named after the English psychiatrist Henry Maudsley, who founded it. Development of MPI First and foremost, Ising developed Maudsley Medical Questionnaire, which was published in 1952. This had only a neurotism scale. Then in 1962, a extroversion scale was added to it and it became Maudsley Personality Inventory. This personality inventory was leading to very socially desirable answers. So to overcome that problem, a life scale was added to it and it was again published now as Ising Personality Inventory. In 1975, Ising added a third dimension to his personality theory, the dimension of psychotism. And again, the EPI was revised and it was given a new form and a new questionnaire was published in 1975 by the name of Ising Personality Questionnaire. It was found that EPQ did not have very good reliability so it was again revised and a revised version of this one was published in 18, 1985 and it was called the Ising Personality Questionnaire. Let's get to know the inventory. The inventory is available in two forms, the long form and the short form. The long form has 48 questions in all, 24 questions from the neurotism scale and 24 questions from extroversion scale. The short form has 12 questions in all. The inventory can be used with anyone who is 16 years old or above. The questions should be answered in yes if one agrees, no if doesn't agree. And question mark should be marked if one has one is undecided. There is no specific time limit to do this, but then ask your subjects to fill in as soon as possible. Usually people take 15 minutes to do this inventory. Here we have given an example. This is the uh, prototype of the MPI. Have a look. Now, while you are administering, as said earlier, there is no time limit, but usually people do in 15 minutes. Use, preferably, the administration of the inventory should be in a very comfortable, conducive environment. Basic equipment such as chairs, tables should be available, which are very, very comfortable. And the room should be devoid of any noise or distractions. Once your subject is comfortably seated, Strike a friendly conversation with him to form a rapport. Ask him about his interests, his likings, what does he want to be. A very friendly conversation. Once the subject is at ease and is comfortable, ask him if he is ready to take the test. If he agrees, give him the MPI inventory. Ask him to fill his name, age, etc. After he has filled in the basics, then give him the following instructions. These are some questions regarding the way you feel, behave and react. In each item, there are three answers, yes, no and question mark. There are a total of 48 items in this test. There are no right or wrong answers. Give the first natural answer as it comes to you. When in doubt, Give the best possible answer. Don't leave any question and try to complete as soon as possible. Usually people take 15 minutes to finish this. Let's see how the scoring is to be done. Okay, this is the answer sheet of MPI. 
फोर्टी एट क्वेश्चन इन ऑल ट्वेल्व क्वेश्चन ऑन द फर्स्ट शीट एंड रेस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन ऑन द नेक्स्ट शीट एंड यू हैव थ्री चॉइसिस फॉर द आंसर्स येस क्वेश्चन मार्क नो नाउ हाउ डू वी स्कोर दिस along with the manual you will get these kind of uh, scoring uh, you know keys which are transparent and on the answer sheet if you see there are two stars made here one here one here and there are boxes made along with which check is written so you will place the answer sheet in a way that it covers both the stars the check box comes over the stars now you will you know get to know 2 1 whatever the scoring is first you will score for neurotism score and then you will again place the checks of the extraversion scale and total up the score for the extraversion score then on the reverse page same similar manner right yeah we'll put, we'll see to it that the stars are covered by both the checks checks over there now if you are conducting the entire long version then you will take the score for all 48 items if you are using only the short scale then you need to score only the first page the first 12 items you can also use this scoring key to get the score raw score on introversion as well as neurotism scale after you have finished the scoring you would have two scores with you the neurotism score and the extraversion score the next step is to convert these raw scores of both extraversion and neurotism scale into stent scores if you have used the long form then use table 4 if you have used the short form then use table 5 supposingly you have used the long form and the extra version score that you are getting is 27 so if we check here it falls under the stent score of 5 so the stent score for extra version is 5 similarly if your score on neurotism is 40 it will fall under the stent score of 9 so the score for neurotism will be stent score for neurotism will be 9 let's learn the interpretation now if the stent scores are between 1 to 4 on extraversion scale it means the person is predisposed towards introversion one being the maximum amount of introversion uh, extreme form of introversion If the stent score lies between five, six, and seven, it indicates that the person is ambivert, can be extrovert or introvert based on the situation. If the stent score is between eight, nine, ten, then the person is towards extroversion, ten being the highest form of extroversion. Similarly, on the neurotism scale, if the person is scoring between one to four, it indicates that the person is emotionally stable and calm. one being the maximum amount of calmness and emotional stability if the person scores between 5 6 7 then he has average emotionality neither too neurotic neither too uh, anxious neither too calm average 8 9 10 on neurotism scale he disposed towards neurotism highly neurotic mood swings 10 being the highest form of neurotism and lot of mood swings will be seen in such kind of a person let's better understand with the help of an example now here the neurotism raw score is 24 and the extroversion raw score is 43 when compared with the long scale data the stent scores are coming out to be 6 and 10 respectively the interpretation would be for neurotism 6 falls under the average emotionality uh, range so the person is average in emotionality while on extroversion he has the highest stent score 10 that means he is highly extrovert so he will fall somewhere here in the entire ramp so that was all about the administration interpretation scoring of mpi 
let's talk about its uses mpi has very very wide usage application it is used in industrial uh, settings uh, for market research it is used for placements it is used in educational guidance and counseling purposes it is used and it has been found that you know extraversion and neurotism has been related to the learning theory and behavior for clinical diagnosis purposes it is very well used and it is a very robust test for this Furthermore, it is used in career guidance, vocational exploration, personal counseling, and personality development as well. With all its benefits, MPI does have few limitations, majorly social desirability and equivalence. Many a times, people do not reveal themselves truly, and they would present themselves in good light and give very very socially desirable answers. Also, many a times, some people have tendency of just agreeing with all the items, irrespective of their content. They do not even read it, and they just keep putting things. So that is excellence. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching.